In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between live versus expanded content in Illustrator. And this is something that is woven throughout Illustrator. So I've got a lot of examples to show you. But to begin, I want to start with an analogy. So we can think of live versus expanded as wet clay versus fired clay. On the one hand, wet clay can be edited by pinching across the top. You can po poke holes in it. You can take a stylus and carve into it. And then once it's fired, there are other things you can do. You can glaze it, you can paint it, you can break it into a million pieces if you want to. And those are things that you can't do with wet clay. So that's more of the expanded version. And also what's key is that once uh, something is expanded, you generally can't go back to its live state. So once something is fired, you can't unfire it. Now let's take a look at how this works in Illustrator. Here on the left, I have live examples. And on the right, I have those same examples once they've been expanded. So here I have some regular font type where I can you know, change the letters, add an S on to the end like that. And then once I convert this to outlines, if we look at this in outline mode, you can see um, now I could work with the anchor points and that sort of thing. So two different ways of editing this. And this is expanding, even though the way that we do this in Illustrator is generally to come up here to the type menu after selecting the type and then down to create outlines. But in essence, what we're doing is expanding this type. Here's another great example. This is a path here that has a brush applied to it. And on the right, that brush path has been expanded. So you can see a great difference between how you would edit both of these. In this path, I can pull out an anchor point and work with the curve handles and make an easy change like this, where over here, that would be nearly impossible because I have so many anchor points there. But there's editing advantages to it being expanded. So for example, if I want to use the eraser tool, shift E, I can just come in here and just carve that out. However, if I do the same thing over here with the path, you'll see it actually just creates two more little paths and reapplies the brush. So it's hard to say whether you would want to keep things live or expanded in every case because the way different types of content are edited in Illustrator, it's really something you have to decide on a case by case basis. So right here is another example. This is a live shape. It's a live polygon and it has this handle that allows you to change the number of sides. And you can find these live shapes here. So we've got a rectangle tool, ellipse tool and polygon tool that all have some kind of live properties like this. But watch what happens when I take one of these anchor points and I move it in, you'll see shape expanded. That little label appears at the top of the screen. So now this doesn't have any more handles. I can't change the number of sides. It's lost those live editing capabilities, but it allowed me to create a different kind of shape. Now you can with live shapes, go up to the object menu to shape and convert to shape. But since this one has been distorted so far from the original that it can't be returned to a live polygon. Here's another example over in the appearance panel. We can see this is a drop shadow here applied to this, which means that, you know, I have editing capabilities here. I can change the opacity and make this a lighter drop shadow, change the distance and all of those things. Once it's expanded, look at that. It's actually an image. If I ungroup this, you can see we have a little image of the shadow there. And so this is pixel based. Now it's no longer a vector effect. Here's another effect. This is a 3D effect. So it's applied to this square here that we can see in outline mode. And if I change the square, we see the whole 3D effect changes. I got to this by going to the effect menu and 3D and materials and then 3D classic. I used the classic version for this just to make it a little faster. But over here, I have the expanded version. So to expand this 3D effect, you'll go to the object menu and choose expand appearance. Depending on the type of content you have selected, you may see instead expand dot dot dot. It really just depends on what's selected. But once you do this, now that's expanded. You know, then it opens up other editing possibilities. So I can come over here and, you know, give this 
one surface a different color, which is something that I couldn't do while it was still a live 3D effect. Another example that we see a lot, of course, is pattern fills. So here's a pattern fill swatch, and this is the expanded pattern fill swatch. So there are times when I wanna to get to all of the vector paths inside of that pattern fill, but of course over here, you know, I may just change the size of the rectangle. Now, when we wanna expand a pattern fill, you go up to the object menu, and here we are with expand dot, dot, dot. And this gives us a little pop-up here so we can decide, do we want to expand the fill? Sometimes we'll also see the stroke checked here. So it all depends on that one particular object. If I click OK, then I won't see all the paths until I look at this in outline mode. <laughs> That's a lot. Now, I have a lot more examples, but before I show you those, let's just cut to the chase here in case you're asking, why would I expand or why would I not expand? So first, why would I expand? Well, of course, to open up different editing possibilities to allow the use of the object in another feature. So Inside of pattern fills, we can't use live brushes or we can use them, but once we save the pattern, those, those live brushes and other live things will be expanded. We can't have gradients in brushes and I'll show you an example of that. So sometimes you need to expand so that you can use your content in another Illustrator feature. Also, you might want to expand to give the art to another designer who doesn't have that same plugin feature or font. So that's why a lot of times people like to outline their type. And then sometimes it happens automatically and not by choice. And we saw that example with that polygon. Now, why not expand? Well, the object loses the live settings that are so easily adjusted. And once you expand, you generally can't unexpand. And so if you're not sure, work on an expanded copy and then you have the best of both worlds. When I am working on a project for a client, I generally keep one copy of my file that's unexpanded, so it's easier for me to edit it later, but maybe there are things in my illustration that I don't want that client to edit, like I wouldn't want them to take my brushes and thicken the stroke weight, for example. And that would really change the character of my illustration, so I want to have control over that, so I would expand some of those things before handing it off. So if you have the patience to stick with me a little longer, let's go over some of these examples because I think there's a few things in here you may want to see. So right here we have a stroke. This is 17 points. And once I've expanded it, we can see it's just a thick shape now. You can expand a stroke by going to expand dot 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 and then you can look at that checkbox there and hit OK. Or you could go to path and outline stroke. It's the same thing. It's just a special expanding command for strokes. Here I have a gradient, just a linear gradient. And over here, once I've expanded it, you can see there are many, many little individual shapes that are creating that gradation. And one reason I may want to expand this is because if I want to create a brush in Illustrator, let's just try this. I'm going to drag in the gradient and Illustrator, let's make this an art brush. I get this warning, the selected artwork contains an element that cannot be used in an art brush. Okay, let's try it with this expanded gradient. Art brush, and we got it. Now we've got a brush with a gradient like that. Down here, we have a freeform gradient, and oh, it looks like I expanded it there. <laughs> so freeform gradients are wonderful because they have these little color stops that are kind of floating around, but they will get expanded if you, for example, try to use them in pattern editing mode where you can't have freeform gradients. And so when I select this expanded freeform gradient, it says non-native art, and these are actually pixels. So I can't get that freeform gradient back. So it's something good to know about those. Here's another example of a pattern fill swatch and something I like to do a lot, which is stack up a couple of fills on one rectangle. So I have a yellow fill behind that pattern. And when you expand it, you get actually two uh, individual rectangles there. So if I'll go up here to object, expand appearance. Now I ungroup these two and we can see there are two individual rectangles now. Here's a roughen effect, something that you can also apply in the appearance panel. And of course, 
so much fun to play with the sliders and edit this like that. Click OK. And then this is the expanded version. And in fact, this one has been expanded twice. I'm going to go into outline mode. And that's Command or Control Y. So if I expand this by going up to Object, Expand Appearance, I expand that effect. And what we have now is the path with a thick stroke applied to it. From there, I can go to the Object menu, Expand, dot, 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 or as we looked at before, Path, Outline Stroke, like this. So that's kind of expanding it twice. Those radial repeats in Illustrator are so much fun and you can work with the handles, but you can also expand those. And then you've got individual shapes here. What we have here is an image tracing, which allows you to go into the image trace panel and adjust the settings. But once you expand it, you have all of those paths inside. And with image tracing, you can expand it by clicking this button on the top control bar. Now, just a few last examples. Here we have a live paint group that I created with the live paint bucket, and it has an expand button appearing on the top control bar when you have a live paint group selected. As long as it's live with my white arrow, I can make changes like this, which are really, really cool. I love that. And then once I've expanded it, I have individual shapes and cutout shapes, so also really fun to edit. This cloud is a compound shape, as we can see up here on the top control bar. And I created this using the Pathfinder panel. So I'll go ahead and open that. When you have a collection of shapes like this and you click the Unite button, usually they'll just combine into a single shape like this. But if you hold the Option or Alt key as you click the button, you'll create a compound shape. And what's special about this is it's a collection of shapes that behave like a single shape. So if I add a stroke to this, for example, I can move these inner shapes around and change them and the stroke constantly updates or the appearance updates because it's really a single appearance applied to multiple objects. So this is live. To expand it, go over to the Pathfinder panel and click on the expand button. And now this is kind of as if I had united these shapes to begin with. The next example, and actually this is our last example, um, is this rectangle with live corners on it. So we love a live corner. Really great, as long as it's live. And this is what it looks like when it's expanded. I'm gonna open up the properties panel because this menu changes depending on what you have selected. And if I have this rectangle with live corners on it, selected and I go over to this transform area. There's a little extra menu right here. Here's where I can see the live properties. So really any live shape that you're working with, like I showed you with that polygon before, will have these extra settings you can adjust here. You can rotate it and you can change the corners numerically. You can also find this panel up here in the top control bar under shape. I'll just set this back to zero. Whoa. <laughs> I'll set this to 90. There we go. But here, when I have this selected over in the properties panel, there's this button, expand shape. We have that also here in the object menu under shape. We looked at this menu before when we looked at convert to shape, we can also expand the shape. When I do this, I lose those live corners and I don't see that shape menu up here anymore. If I click on this little three dot menu, I don't have these corners anymore that I can adjust. So it's now expanded. But because I haven't done any edits to this, it still is basically a rounded rectangle. I can go back up to the object menu and let's go to shape and convert to shape. And look, I got those live corners back. So that's something special about live shapes and live corners. So that's my last example. There are more, of course, in Illustrator, there's always more, but I hope this has been helpful to you. If so, subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a like, give me a comment. I'd love to hear what you're interested in learning about Adobe Illustrator. And if you wanna know more about how I teach Adobe Illustrator on my website, you can check it out at lauracoilcreative.com. And thank you so much for watching.